Hey everyone, uh, in this video, we'll be talking about my preferred way or in fact, my favorite way to work with form mutations inside Next.js 13 with Zord, React Hook Form and any of your favorite component library. In this video, I'll be doing it with Chakra UI, but you can use it with anything, especially the one by Shatsian in his new form component, uh, about more of which you can find out in the video over here. So let's start off. To start off with, I'm going to show you a demo of what I had built for a project uh, I was working on. And this is the project I have. Uh, so basically, I have an edit profile form and I have this name, email and the phone number. The email, let me zoom in. The email is not supposed to be editable. The other than that, the name and the phone is supposed to be editable only. The phone is optional, but the name is not. So if I remove this and click on edit profile. I have Zord validation inside this and I also have a max limit, but I will have to type out 255 characters for that to test out. And if I want, I can just try out any phone number. Uh, I don't have any format uh, validation for phone, but you can have that as well. And Zord is pretty flexible with all that. If I click on edit profile or uh, hit enter, it will just load. This is using Chakra UI. Uh, but you can use anything you want. It might take a second or two because it is still rendering. But the pro uh, profile has been updated successfully. And if I just close this. And also this is using a pretty cool method called route interceptions and uh, uh, parallel routing inside Next.js 13. Also a video on um, which you can find out your uh, over there at the top right top left yeah, top right so anyways to start off i'm just going to go through the basic code uh, which explains uh, how this works all right so this is the edit form and uh, basically in the front end i have this form and all these uh, form controls by chakra ui uh, on the submit it is doing something very uh, you know what very you know something very weird, which you won't see often, but I'll go through that in a second. Uh, but I, uh, what I'm doing is having this is invalid, which basically uh, sets that to red when it's uh, invalid. Let me just wait for that to work and see that red, which is there. That is because of the is invalid, which is coming up and I can register using react hook forms and the is disabled is for is loading and I have this error messages and these errors which are generated by Zord. Now the form control, I have one for the phone as well. And that's for the text. Uh, it's registering the phone. I have this autocomplete off in my case because it was showing my phone number, which I didn't want uh, to happen. But um, in your case, just have that as on. So what I'm doing basically over here is I have this use form uh, hook provided by React hook form. It is taking a generic of the edit profile request. I will talk about what this is in a second, but this is basically taking a Zord resolver and passing in the default values which are coming in. The default values would be the Kabindesi Valley and 999 and um, 10 times anyways, right? So what I'm doing then is I have this use mutation hook. This is from React query. And what I'm doing is having a mutation key mutation function, which takes basically the name and the phone, which is the of the type of edit profile request. Again, something I'll talk about in a second. I'm taking out the payload and then I'm sending that data. Uh, I'm sending that payload inside this API request using Axios and then returning the data. And on success, I'm taking the name and the phone and then updating um, the state. This is actually not needed because I'm already doing router dot refresh down here, but I have it just in case and I have good toast validation over here as well. If something goes wrong, I will just say something went wrong and able to edit your profile, but it will have the error show up in the logs in my server. So basically this is sending a request to API set profile slash edit. Before I go about what that is, I want to talk about Zord over here for a second. So let me just look at the definition for edit profile schema. So I have this function over here. Um, well, the Zod schema over here, which is basically edit profile schema. It is an object which takes a name, the string. Uh, it is supposed to be a string. It is a minimum. It needs to have a minimum of one character 
and if it doesn't it will show a message of name must be at least one character long which is what you see here if i edit profile with that so if i change this message it will change this as well so we could change this to name is required so if i change that and go back and click on well let's just restart this we might have to refresh the page in this case but basically that will change uh, the validation error message and it has a maximum of 255 and also the phone is optional because i don't want it to you know show all the uh, data which is coming up all right so let's just profile settings again um I'm actually facing a few issues with uh, <clears throat> Next.js dev uh, devs compilation speed and they actually have this issue with a lot of people and their Vercel is actually working very hard on fixing it but it's uh, and it's it has had considerable improvements over the past few weeks but it's still not up to the mark I would expect it to be but I'm sure Vercel will fix it soon enough because all, they're already doing so much on that so now if I change that and click on edit profile, it will change to name is required. All right, let me just change that back. But I have that. Now, the good part about that is now because I have that, see this export type over here. So basically what I'm doing is just export is inferring the type of that schema. And if I hover over this, that is basically name, which is supposed to be string and phone, which is optional, which is string or undefined. So over here, basically this is basically just the type uh, generic which is being passed on and I also have the mutation function which is using the same. This is kind of inspired from um, a code base I saw from Josh uh, Josh Wright Coding. You can uh, find out about his YouTube channel as well. He has amazing videos on Next.js 13 but um, you know this is a pretty much standard but good practice which I follow in a lot of code bases nowadays. Now to go to the um, profile edit in the backend basically what uh, that is doing is let me just profile slash edit slash route okay so basically uh, if i see over here it is calling this uh, it is using this edit profile schema over here as well and i'm using the same schema in the front end and the back end as well to validate that is so cool because I don't need to have multiple validations now. I can just have one schema and then have it to validate in both the client and the backend. And remember that it can't be done only in the client because someone might be able to send a post request directly um, and not from the browser. So you need to have you need to have backend validation as well. Uh, so that's why we are using the sort validation over here as well. That is one thing. The second thing I wanted to talk about is well, that's pretty much it about the fact that um, uh, about how my preferred way is. But I actually wanted to talk about something, another uh, very cool thing which I did with Zord as well. Uh, so I have another form which I can't show. But basically what I'm doing over there is I have, a, uh, I have two um, schemas for it. I have one for the client and one for the ba uh, backend uh, or the server. I tell you why because if i jump to definition for this one this is just what this is doing is it's taking the account number it's a, about financial accounts account number description category and company id etc and it's just normal validation using zord but my back end okay so this is the one on the back end yes so the, what this is doing is it is also using something called a refine function and what that is doing is it is taking the account number and the company ID which is passed into the schema and then checking if an account exists with that uh, account number and company ID. If it exists, then we need to return false because what return false does is it says it is an error and we say account with this account number already exists for this company ID and they can't create it. So I have all these validations inside Zord itself and it's super cool how this works. And apparently you can do something like the, uh, this in fewer lines of code with super refine as well. And uh, um, is that's what 
uh, Colin, uh, the creator of Zord, told me in a tweet. Uh, and you can find out more about that as well. But that was it for this video. I just wanted to share with you guys my preferred way to work with form mutations inside next year's 13. And that is it. And that is super easy and so uh, amazing to work with. Um, a bonus point, like I said, you can go and use Shad's uh, form for this. If I go to the components and go to form, um, all this is super interesting. The UI is obviously amazing from Shad, um, but what I wanted to talk about mainly is the where's that React Hook form example? Oh, here it is. It's the one which is uh, using that uh, Zord validation, and it has use form and then React Hook form docs. You can obviously check that out to learn more. And it was super interesting. I actually have a video on that, like I said in the at the beginning of the video, and you can find that uh, out in the description. So that was it. Just a 10 minute video that I wanted to share with you guys about. And I hope you like that video. And if you want more such content, please like, share and subscribe and keep watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.